Hey everyone, in this video we are going to continue working on the day-night cycle system that we started on in the last video. There's not much more to say here other than this is going to be the last video in this day-night cycle series for the time being. If I improve it or make changes down the line, I'll definitely make videos on that, but for now, I'm considering it to be complete. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Hey everyone, I'm back inside of the day-night cycle project and before we get started here with the second and last video for this project for the time being, I just wanted to show you all a quick example. I have my completed day-night cycle actor here and there are some initial values that I can set. I can set the duration to be one minute. Um, I can set the year to the date of recording. I mean the date to the date of recording. I could even set the local time to my time here, which won't be the local time for the longitude that I'm at, but eh, it doesn't really matter. And I know on the new way we're doing local time, we're now using a decimal format. So 1043 is 10.43. 12 o'clock would be 12.0, 12.30 would be 12.3, 101 would be 1.01, so on and so forth. And we're in uh, military time, that's what we're doing here. That way we don't have to, because if we do, you know, AM and PM, then it's just more work when two numbers can mean, when one number can mean two different things. But if one of those is 0 o'clock and one of those is 12 o'clock, then two numbers for two different things, then we avoid that headache. So if I play it, we can see that the sun is moving through the sky. We can see some things being printed in the corner of the screen here. Our time... Um, and our time is being printed in a decimal format which is why we go above 60. Let's see the sun move and go down. It'll eventually come back around. Uh, Lumen is a bit slow to update because realistically, well, we wouldn't want our day-night cycle to last this fast anyway, unless we're doing some sort of time lapse. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to go to the equation of time and make sure um, and point this out. In the last video, I left this last key with the value of zero. It should match the first key and have a value of negative four. And that was a mistake on my part. I forgot to do that. So make sure you guys do that. I left a note in the description of the last video, but I wanted to get that on camera because otherwise there'll be a little discrepancy and things will shift by a couple of minutes in the nighttime. So we definitely want to make sure that our first and last key line up there. I'm going to save that, close out of it, and instead of going through step-by-step -step, um, doing everything inside of the day-night cycle actor, um, instead I'm just going to walk you guys through the completed actor here and all the blueprint logic. And then I will uh, also link the project in the description so you guys can download it and play around with it yourselves. If you don't eat, want to um, pause the video and copy what I have, you're welcome just to download and use the stuff from that project. So to begin, we have our begin play event. And that fires off a sequence. The first thing we do is we set the timer for the update time event where we increment the time by a single minute. So the day night cycle duration um, is a float where we input how long we want 24 hours to last in minutes. In this case, the default when you drag an actor into the level is a 30 minute day night cycle. We're gonna divide that by 1440, the amount of minutes in a day, then divide that by 60, divide 60 by that, I'm sorry, to convert that into a value in seconds because this timer works in seconds, not minutes. And now this set timer by event will loop and it will fire 
the increment time event every so many of these seconds before we explore that increment time and date collapsed graph we're going to look at the next thing that this begin play sequence does it sets the starting date and time info we get all the actors of class sun sky and then we get the first um, actor inside of that array and if you only have one in your level you should only have one in your level then that should do the trick it'll get you your actor if you have more than one um, it's possible you just have to do some more logic here and know which is which we then set a year variable with an exposed initial year that we can set from outside the in the editor um, there's no year in the sun sky actor so we do all our year calculations inside of this blueprint then we set our month and day with an initial month and initial day integer variables both of these are just instant editable so that we can change them when we drag an actor into our level and finally we take this initial local time in the hour minute decimal format and we convert it to a hour minute thousands i guess format where the first two numbers would be the hour the second two would be the minute so 12 o'clock would be 1200 or 1200 uh, one o'clock would be 1300 or 1300 1230 would be 1250 because we're converting from minute to decimal so that 30 is now a 50 that 15 is now a 25 so on and so forth because that method that um way of displaying the time of handling the time of storing the time is what this equation uses so let's open up that function we take the input let's say that in this case the input is 12.3 so 12.30. We're going to truncate that, and that'll give us 12. If it was 12.50, it would still give us 12. It's not rounding up. It always rounds down. So we have 12.3, and we truncate that, and so this integer is now 12. We subtract it from 12.3, which gives us 0.3, the time past the current hour in minute decimal form. We then multiply that by 130. So now we're dealing in the form that our equation takes, but we're still in a minute form instead of a uh, multiplied decimal form. So we're dealing with 30 when it should be 50. So we take that 30, we divide it by 60, and that will convert our minute form to our, our scale of 0 to 60 to a scale of 0 to 100. Then, well, we've reduced it down, we've divided it by 60, so we're back down into that decimal format, but our equation takes an input that's a number that is some thousand. So we have to multiply that again by 100, and then that will finally give us 50. So we start with 0.3, we multiply by 100, get 30, divide by 60, and we get 0.5, and then we multiply by 100 and get 50. We then take this truncated value, this 12, multiply it by 100, get 1,200, and then add 50 to that, and now, so our 12.3 for 1230 becomes 1,250, and that is our return value. So now we have this variable for our equ equation. And if your equation is the same, if you're starting from the point in the last video, um, your equation here will have an LT input. Just plug this variable into it. 
I deleted the equation and recreated it after I'd created this LT variable. So it stuck it inside of the equation here instead of making an input here. There's not a real difference. Just take your LT variable, get it, and plug it into a top input here that isn't in mine. Or just recreate the equation and type this into your math expression node. It doesn't really matter. So what is next is our event tick. We have another sequence. This is just a debug where I'm printing some of my variables to the corner of the screen like you saw earlier. This is how I'm printing the month. I'm just using a symbol select node. 1 is January, 12 is December, so 0 is not going to be a month, it's just going to be null. If it's printing null, you know something's wrong. So we have our year, our day, and our local time in our other format. We could um, we can always reverse that equation and convert it back and print that. Because we're incrementing the local time, we're not incrementing our initial local time. So that's not something I did. But it's something that I'll probably do in the future, and when I do, I'll make a video on it. But for now, this system is considered to be complete. If I make edits down the road, I'll definitely share them with you all, though. So, what we now do is we convert our local time to what the SunSky plugin understands, solar time. And a lot in all of this logic here is actually the same as the last video. You don't have to change anything here. We just changed and fixed our curve float for the equation of time. We then divide this by 100 to get our to take let's say let's continue with our example 1250 we convert that to solar time which is in the same format and divide it by 100 to take it back to a decimal format so let's pretend that solar time is the same as local time for the sake of simplicity and understanding 1250 is our output let's pretend that gets divided by 100 we're back to 12.5 that 0.5 mean really means 1230 Remember that we're dealing with a decimal format instead of a minute format here. And now we subtract 12. Why? Because Sun Sky is a little weird. 12 o'clock is 24 o'clock in Sun Sky. 24 o'clock is 12 o'clock in Sun Sky. Subtract 12 to match up these values. But then, oh no, what if it's 0 o'clock? We subtracted 12. We're at negative 12. What now? Well, if, well, if this is less than zero, we just add 24, and that constrains us to that zero to 24 range. But before we do that, we need to figure out if we're using daylight savings time. You can enable it with this Boolean. It should be instant editable, and it also should be um, one of the initial values. Uh, slight oversight on my part there. So we can click our actor, select it, and we can check enable daylight savings time or uncheck it. So when it's enabled, we don't do anything. When it's disabled, we subtract an hour. And in reality, we should be adding an hour when it's enabled, but that's just not how Sun Sky does it again. And because we can subtract one, we want to check if it's less than zero after we do this, because if we check before, let's say it's, I don't know, 12 o'clock, let's say it's 1225, or 1225. Divided by 100, 12.25, subtract Okay, let's say it's 11.25. Subtract 12. We have a negative 0.75. And it would work if we had it right after. But if it's like a 12.25, well, now we have a 0.25. Oh, no. 
we are not in daylight savings time. Now we're negative 0.75, but this has said it's positive because this code is coming before this code and that will cause issues. I ran into that the hard way and it took me longer than I would have liked to have to figure out that little flaw in logic. So I wanted to go over here with you guys and explain my exact reasoning for ordering this as I did. So now we add the 24 if it's less than zero to constrain it to that zero to 24 range. And then we set the solar time for sun sky. So we're using this LT variable inside of our equation. And we're doing this every tick, but we're just setting this LT variable once this local time variable once. So nothing would change. That is where our increment time event comes into play. First thing we do is we increment the local time. We just add one to LT. And it's done every so many seconds so that your duration of your cycle is correct. Then we just check, hey, is this greater than 2,400 or 24 o'clock? And if so, hey, we need to subtract 2,400 so that because it's a new day, and we need to reset the clock. So it's a new day. Well, that means we need to increment the day. So to do that, we increment the day, and then we check, K, hey, what year is it? What month is it? And is the current day, let's say it's December 32nd. Well, that's not right. So we set the day back to one, and then we increment the month, because now we need it to be January. Oh no. Well, the month is 13 now, so we need to check, hey, is the month greater than 12? If true, we need to set the month to 1. It's another year, and because the month is greater than 12 and we set it to 1, well, now we need to increment the year. And, well, years don't repeat themselves, so we don't have to worry about that. And the reason we, and the reason I'm, the stays in month is real useful. It's just a part of Unreal Engine, as far as I know, and, um, it's super useful here because, of course, we could hard code this month is 30 days, this month is 31 days, but then there's February and leap years, and that would just be a ton to keep track of, so I can just pop this pure function in there and it works wonderfully. So we're incrementing our local time and we're updating our day, year, and month variables. And we're also resetting local time when it's a new day. Perfect. That is all of our logic. That's everything here. And that is what gives us our completed result. There's one thing I want to point out. It's a flaw in the system. The sun jitters. It won't always jitter, but we're only updating that local time variable every so many seconds. Usually it's less than a second. Um, when you're, you know, we have, we have a one in here, but let's put a 30, 30 minutes increments. We can watch our time. You can see the sun move. Still a bit jittery, but it's still slow. My game, I'm looking at something closer to 180 minutes for a complete day night cycle. And so you don't really see any sort of jitter there. It could, it could be made better. You could take local time, you could take delta time um, into this formula and do it off of tick. It's probably a better way to do it, but I think it's good enough. It's not broken. I'm not going to try to fix it, and I want to get this video out to you guys. I could take a couple of hours to try to fix and change that equation, but I think it's good enough personally, and that would just eat too much into my day and I might have to delay the video another day and I don't want to do that. So I hope you all found this system useful. Again, it'll be linked in the description. Modify it, do whatever you want with it and make it better. And if you find problems, if you have ideas for solutions, or if you get around to moving this equation over into Delta time before I do, let me know in my Discord server. Join it. The link is in the description and I will and I will, and if 
you find a bug and figure out how to fix it or just find a bug and want to let me know or you figure out how to get delta time implemented in this it shouldn't be too hard i just don't want to spend the time on it when i don't see it as necessary for my project let me know and i will showcase it in a video the changes update the project on google drive all that kind of stuff i hope you enjoyed the video if you did leave the like down below and join the discord server too while you're at it and don't forget to subscribe share the video around with anyone who you think it might benefit and i'll see you all in the next video thank you for watching